Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Matwichak, and the purpose of today's intermittent reinforcement email message is to speak to you about how REBT applies to worry and anxiety. In rational and motor behavior therapy, we take a slightly different tack towards worry and anxiety than that which is typically the first line of defense in cognitive behavior therapy. Other cognitive behavior therapists and your friends will often attempt to reassure you that you may be assuming the worst and there's a good probability that it won't happen, that you are in fact overestimating that probability. And they may even use the word that you're uh, engaging in what's called the fortune teller error or your mind reading and encourage you to uh, calm down and not worry when you remind yourself that the worst case scenario may not happen. REBT is a tough-minded approach to worry and anxiety, and we attempt you to get some degree of peace of mind in the form of transforming your worry, which is very ruminative, into a healthy concern, which doesn't have that ruminative quality and allows you to approach the problem and do what you can to ward off the threat. So worry and anxiety are associated with a threat to either your comfort, safety, or your self-esteem. People worry, in fact, about failing uh, and, and looking bad in their performance in the future. It might be a or they worry about safety and security and comfort to themselves or another person that's dear to them. And this threat to their safety and security may be real or imagined. In either case, what REBT tries to help you to do is to adopt healthy attitudes, flexible and non-extreme attitudes that will allow you to see that should the worst case scenario happen, regardless of the probability, should it happen, that you could tolerate it, withstand it, live with it, cope with it, adapt. In my view, this is a far more empowering approach to anxiety and worry because the worried individual always wonders, even if the probability is low, that a threatening event may or may not occur, it's still always a possibility that it can occur. So in REBT, when people talk about relationship ambiguity and worry about their relationship, worry about finance, worry about health or failures in the future, rather than get them to think, quote unquote, logically about the probability of these bad events happening, we encourage them to see that in this world, sooner or later, bad things will happen. And the best way to be comfortable in the moment, or at least have a healthy concern in the moment, is to cultivate flexible and non-extreme attitudes. So for example, attitudes like, I really don't want this symptom to be an indicator of serious medical illness, but sadly it could be. First, let me accept that it's possible it could be. Let me go and get accurate information from a physician as to whether or not it is, but I'm going to reassure myself that if it is, I'm going to have what it takes to face the challenges of treating a serious medical illness. Same thing with relationship problems. People will often develop an unhealthy worry because they have an unhealthy emotional dependence upon another and think that they need the other person. What we try to show people is that although life will be far better with another person in your life, it still is something that you could tolerate should the relationship for one reason or another end. Unfortunately, even the most passionate love affairs um, end because one person might die before the other. Usually that's the case. And so REBT tries to help people have 
a healthy attitude towards future loss. Same way with financial um, uh, challenges. We all want financial security and hopefully use REBT to discipline ourselves to save and invest our money prudently. But having enough money is really a matter of probability and we never have absolute certainty that we have sufficient savings to face all possible outcomes. So in REBT, we encourage people to accept that absolute certainty is impossible and that all we can do is do our best to build our funds for a rainy day and then accept the uncertainty around finances and future threats to our finances. I've stayed with rational emotive behavior therapy for 32 or now actually 34 years because I truly believe that it's better to empower people to see that they can handle the worst case scenario than get them to look for cognitive distortions that bad events might not happen. As I like to say, sooner or later, Bad things are going to happen. You can run, but you can't hide from life. And rather than develop a reassurance that bad things won't happen, I would rather people develop a tough-minded attitude that whatever the hand of fate has in store for them, that they can rise to the challenge and deal with it. So I would encourage you to study the REBT intermittent reinforcement associated with this video and work on developing the tough-minded attitude that is characteristic of the REBT approach to worry. I would also like to remind you that every Saturday I do a demonstration with a volunteer. I've done this now for almost 200 weeks and it's held at 9 a.m. in New York City. I take a volunteer from somewhere in the world and show them how to address a problem using the sensible and practical ideas of REBT. We talk about worry. We talk about losses. We talk about failures. We talk about all different types of problems. And the people that watch learn as much as the volunteer does. It's at 9 a.m. It's on Zoom. It's free to attend, but you need the link. So write to me at rebtdoctor at gmail.com and you can join us too. The people that come week after week learn a great deal. It's at 9 a.m. in New York every Saturday, which is 2 p.m. in the UK, 4 p.m. in Bucharest, 6.30 in Delhi, India, and 10 p.m. in Tokyo. We have a worldwide audience, and that's because REBT is really the an ideal psychotherapy for helping people regardless of the culture they hail from. REBT helps people to think in a flexible way about whatever cultural prescriptions an individual may be striving to live according to. And when they fall short, REBT encourages people to accept themselves even if they're not living up to their cultural prescriptions. I hope to see you on Saturday, so write to me at rebtdoctor at gmail.com and I'll send you the link.